we, we have to start with Arsenal and Chelsea. I agree. What's going on at Arsenal is pretty remarkable. Mm-hmm. They win again. Uh, they don't just, you know, the scoreline, you can say 1-0, weirdo goal. But if we actually look at the performance over the 90 minutes, uh, there was just one team out there. Yeah, it was so one-sided. I was very surprised. It's been a long time since you've seen one of those you know, heavyweight Premier League clashes. So one-sided for the away team. The home team, you know, you can dominate at home, but the away side for Arsenal to go to Chelsea, play the way they did, I think the XG is 2.25 or 2.2. They had chances, they could have scored three easily, but it's not even so much the chances that they created and the ones they missed and the one they score. It's just how dominant they were with the ball in defensive transition. Chelsea had nothing. I think they had one shot on tire. Ramsdale hardly have a save to make. So I've rarely seen... Chelsea struggling so much at home in, like, in recent season, really. So the, the, the headline of this is now that, oh, look, they have more points at this stage than the Invincibles did, blah, blah, blah. Wish you hate. You know my thoughts about that. Yeah. Later in the podcast section, we might even go 1 through 11 through the two because I, <laughs> I think this speaks to a lot broader issue in, in football. Um, I was really struck, and Arteta mentioned afterwards how mature they looked out there. I was really struck by the level Granite Shaka is playing at, uh, Partey, we knew that when he's fit, you know, he can, he can, he yeah, can be yeah. that player. Uh, and obviously Udegaard, who's come on leaps and bounds. I, I thought this game was won in midfield. Mm-hmm. I, I know the flash is Saka and, and, and people, oh, Gabriel Jesus runs yeah, around Saliba so much, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. No, they're good and the defenders are good. Mm. But it was the middle of the park, which, which set the tone, you know? Yeah, I think the, the counter-pressing, especially, like Chelsea could not do three passes together. Every time they had the ball or they, they, they got the ball or they started a move, they just could not go through that midfield. And that's why I thought at some point, Graham Potter could say, OK, listen, let's try something else and let play over that midfield and put them at least under pressure cool. in their own half. Instead, they kept trying to play and in midfield, check out the guy and party was just, again, so dominant. But right. I don't understand why you don't try something else when what you are doing is not working. So I knew when I laid this out, I said, okay, we have to be nice to Arsenal. And then we put the boot into Chelsea for that wretched performance. I was going to do it in a few seconds. You <laughs> jumped the gun there. That's fine. I just don't get Let, it. No, let's go with this, okay? Because I appreciate there are injuries and whatever else, right? You decide to go with the back four. You decide to go with, with the box. Again, you keep changing the, the personnel in the box. So how yeah. these people are going to work together? Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. How you would, to me, I don't know if it was his mindset. I don't know if he's just not good anymore. I'm leaning towards the second one. How demented this signing was. Oh, Tuchel knows him. And like, he doesn't need to play in this game. He does not need to play in this game because Armando Broya is a better option. Or Havertz with another guy who can actually pass the ball in the middle of the park. You mentioned the passing, right? So we know Jorginho can pass on a good day. We know Thiago Silva can pass. And we know Mason Mount can pass. You're trying to pass through the press when you've got three players who can pass. The other people are people who just run with the ball, yeah. people who do nothing with the ball, people who just boot the ball like and miss hit everything, like Ukurea, people who stand around and get eight touches on the pitch, like Aubameyang. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, How I does thought, that happen? Yeah, I thought team selection was poor from Potter. I think the tactics, the game plan... The most infuriating for me is no changes in anything. I, like, I knew this was coming, yeah. But, but it's true. I mean, there's a point where after... After 15 minutes, we could all watch the game and say, OK, this is going to be a long afternoon for Chelsea unless they try something else here because they're so, so, so much worse than what Arsenal are and what Arsenal are offering. And yet, he doesn't, there's just nothing. He's standing there on the touchline, not doing anything. There's his assistant, like the short one, who's talking to him and he's just like, and it, it looks like they're just going through the motion, not doing anything. I don't understand this. Now, I, I know at Brighton, they were such a perfectly oiled machine that he would obviously often change personnel and make tweaks and stuff and it would work. And that's what he talks about when he talks about the concepts. And maybe it is a really, really long process to instill those. And as I've said, I think Graham Potter is, is brilliant. He showed it. Um, but my concern is you don't have time to work on the training pitch with these people. So when you put them out there, Aubameyang is going to play differently than Havertz. And so inevitably things are going to be different out there and and for me that's what's so frustrating in this context 
I mean, you quote that right back means that you're not going to get anything. He wasn't bad, but yeah, obviously yeah, he's not Reese James. So everything yeah. changes, right? Kukureya, I don't need to see again, frankly. Honestly, Kukureya and Aubameyang, I don't, I, 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 I know. you know, you leave Koulibaly on the bench, fine. Maybe he's a knock. Maybe you don't like him, whatever. But I, they're digging themselves into a hole. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.